Hi there, everyone, and an amazing morning to each and every one of you. I am your teacher, Daryl Del Mundo, and today we will discuss about our first quarter week number four. Yes, you heard it right. We are now in our fourth week and with the connection with our topic, which is all about chemistry. Now we will proceed to the topic, which is all about mixtures. So I know that you have already like the first things in your mind that when we are talking about mixtures, it's all about combination. Okay, so we will know more about this one because this part is a dual part module. So it is divided into lessons one to six actually, but we will tackle first the first part, which includes lesson number one, mixtures and its type, and lesson number two for particle size in mixtures, and lesson number three, apply mixtures in daily life. And to start with, for our lesson number one, so we are going to tackle about mixtures and its type because it is a very diverse uh, mixtures or matter. We are going to specifically identify what type is this mixture. Okay, and to start with, we will now first again classify matter because we all know in the last time that we have discussed that we can classify matter based on it uh you can whether you can physically separate this matter or you cannot physically separate this matter so when we are talking about matter that can be physically separated it's all about mixtures okay and like what you have watched in our week number four introduction video so you should watch it Okay, it is included in your Google Classroom. So there are two major subdivisions of the classification of matter, namely pure substance and mixtures or impure substance. We already tackled about pure substances, right? And now we will focus more on the mixture part or what we call impure substances. So basically, it is like the combination of more pure substances. Okay, so impure substances, if we have water, if we have sugar, salt, and many more, then when we are talking about mixture, which are impure substances, these are all combinations of water, sugar, salt, and many more. Okay? At kung ano pa yung mga may isip nyo tungkol doon sa mixture, you're right. Okay? So, whatever things or substances that you are going to combine, that is what we call mixture. Okay? So let's proceed. Also, in the classification of matter, we should know more about these two. So this is just a recap. So pure substance, these are pure substances are again classified into elements and compounds. Example, we have sugar, gold, salt, water, and etc. Okay, so these are the examples of pure substances. So if it is composed of one element or one atom meaning to say that is an element if it is composed of two or more atoms or elements that is a compound while mixtures or impure substances these are all the mixtures considered to be impure substances okay example mixed nuts coffee pancet juices and etc so these are all the examples of mixtures okay so it looks like uh, you're getting hungry right now because when we are talking about mixtures or impure substances, most likely these are all the combinations of the foods that you are thinking right now. Okay, so mixtures. The majority of substances that we see in our surrounding neighborhoods are actually not pure substances. They are all mixtures. Mixtures are substances composed of two or more forms of matter. You can separate them by physical methods, meaning to say, with the use of your hand, uh, with the use of a tool or equipment, you can uh, separate all the things that you combined. Okay? So examples include a solution of salt and water, a mixture of sugar and water, different gases, air, and etc. In any mixture, the various components do not combine through any kind of chemical changes. Therefore, the components do not lose 
their individual properties, meaning to say, you are able to see the specific properties, everything, okay, in a mixture. So meaning to say, for example, in this picture, you can see the tomato, you can see the lettuce and carrots, onions, and whatsoever. And in this part, in our teacup, in our teacup here, you can able or you are able to see the tea bag and also the dried tea leaves and the water. So you can identify each characteristic of those substances. So that's how we classify mixture. And not only that, because there are two different types of mixtures, namely homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. So from the word homo, which means one, hetero, which means two or more. So when we are talking about homogeneous mixtures, you can only see one face, while heterogeneous mixtures, you can see two or more faces. Okay, so how are they different to one another? So all solutions are examples of homogeneous mixture. Example, water plus sugar equals sugar solution. Water plus salt equals salt solution. So the particles in such a case are less than one nanometer, meaning to say very small particles. You cannot differentiate the boundaries of particles anymore. You cannot separate the constituent particles here using centrifugation or decantation. Hindi mo sa kayang salain. Okay? So ibig sabihin, sobrang liliit na ng particles that they are very uniform when it comes to the phases. Isa na lang ang nakikita mo. That's why one phase only. Examples of these are alloys of a solution. Alloys are combination of metals. Okay, so para makagawa kayo ng mga metals or ng steel, these are all the combinations of different elements or metal elements. Okay, so that is what we call alloys. They do not show Tyndall effect. So Tyndall effect is the spreading of light. So when you put flashlight in it, you cannot see the light passes through, but the light is spread. Okay? But this time, it do not show Tyndall effect. So when you uh, put the flashlight in a salt solution, you will see no Tyndall effect. Okay, so next, in the heterogeneous mixture part, most of the mixtures are heterogeneous except solutions and alloys. The size of the particles here is between one nanometer and one micrometer. So slightly larger than the solution. Okay, the constituent particles are present uniformly here. You can identify the components easily because it has larger particles than the solution. Generally, two or more phases are present in heterogeneous mixture. They show a Tyndall effect. So for example, milk. So when you when you uh, when you put a flashlight towards the glass of milk, you will see that the light is spread inside the glass, and that is what we call Tyndall effect. And it is very useful when it comes to foggy environment, kapag mahamog. That is why you should use fog light when you are going to, you know, a place where there's a lot of fog. So because FAD is a colloid and it's under heterogeneous mixture, different and a very thick air, okay, different composition of air that's very thick. That is a FAD. So this is what a heterogeneous and homogeneous particles look like. So in a homogeneous mixture, uniform distribution of particles. We have here air, steel, wine, and then rain. So it's very uniform. Uh, it is uniformly distributed, while heterogeneous mixture, non-uniform distribution of particles such as ice water, cereal in milk, soil, oil, and vinegar. So this is how they look like. It looks like a game, but it's not. And for activity number one, you should use your eyes and you should observe well. So for activity number one, what do they look like? So you must observe the given sets of materials on how mixtures look like. Answer the following questions after. So we have setup A, full of B, and we have setup B, full of different substances. Let's proceed. 
So, I want you to investigate the following container that we have here. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten containers with different colors and sizes of beads. So, these are all the questions. But I want you to observe it for three minutes. You should use your five senses. Uh, especially the sense of sight when it comes to this observation. And you need to think critically when it comes to this type of activity because as you can see, it's more visual. So what do you think the answer for the question number one, which contains mixtures in our setup? And how can you tell that this one is mixture, this one is not mixture like that? based on the examples or the setup that we have here. And number three question, what properties of the particles are to make this decision? So based on what you see, what you are seeing right now, we can answer those questions. And also, we, all, uh, we tackled about mixtures already. So based on the definition that we have a while ago, you should apply it here in our activity. We said, that mixture is a composition of two or more pure substances. So now let's apply it here in our setup. So you have one and 40 seconds minutes left. So I want you to observe because later on I will not allow you anymore to uh, observe because you are already observed each container and next time it's for our different substances. Then I think that you can answer this one. We can now proceed. Let's wait until it's one minute. Mm -hmm. Let's wait. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So which contains mixtures? So we have these containers and these containers. As you can see, they have different colors of beads and sizes of beads inside the container. That is why it is considered as mixture. Then how can you tell? Simply because it contains more than one bead, more than one color of beads and more than one size of beads. So it's composed of many sizes and colors. So what properties of the particles are to make this decision? Again, contains more than one type of particle. So meaning to say uh, that it, it is not just composed of one particle, but different particles altogether. Very good. So in our setup A, so this is the concept. This represents pure substances, the red, blue, yellow, and green beads in a container because it contains only one type of particle. I know you got it right. And for another setup, in this example, this represents mixture simply because it contains more than one type of particle. So we have here the red and yellow beads. We have green and blue beads. We have the red, yellow, and blue beads over here, and then red, yellow, blue green did here that is why it is considered as mixture and you get it right again and for our setup b let's proceed okay i want you to investigate again but we will not consume the three minutes because all you have to do is to observe what's inside the test tube so we have here the test tube set up b1 and set up B2. So in our setup B1, we have here sugar in a test tube. We have sand and sand and salt in a test tube. And we have in our setup B2, in a test tube, we have here zinc, copper, and then zinc and copper combined in a test tube. So the same question goes with this one, which contain mixtures. How can you tell? And what properties of the particles are to make your decision? I think that you are ready to answer this one. So which contains mixtures? Basically, these two 
test tubes contain the mixture. We have the salt and the sand in a test tube, and then we have the zinc and copper in a test tube. Very good. So how can you tell? Simply because it contains more than one substance. And what properties of the particles are to make this decision? It contains more than one type of substances. It composed of many substances in a test tube. Like for example, we have salt and sand, and we have copper and zinc in a test tube. Very good observation. So we have here pure substances in setup B1 because it contains only one substance, such as sugar, sand, copper, zinc. Okay, we can consider sugar and sand as compounds and copper and zinc are elements. While setup B2, in this case, these are all mixtures because it contains more than one chemical substance, such as salt and sand, zinc and copper in a test tube. Very good observation, class. And for our setup concept in this part, this one, although it has one color, but it is considered mixture. Why? Because the large red beads are different to small red beads. So this counts as a mixture. So it doesn't mean that they have the same color, but they have different particle sizes or sizes of particles. They are considered as mixture, not a pure substance. Okay. And in this case, another example in this part, this is considered as pure substance because in the tube, the copper pieces are different in sizes, yes. But however, they are all made of copper atoms and all copper atoms are the same. So meaning to say, composition of the same elements considered as a pure substance. One atom is the same as one element. Okay, always remember that. And for our lesson number two, we are going to discuss about particle size in mixtures. So there are different uh, sizes of particles in a given mixture, and it depends. And that, that will guide us to this journey. Okay, let's get it on. So in the mixture, like what we have settled a while ago, we have homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. So Again, homogeneous mixtures are the particles of the substances that are mixed together and there is no clamping of the particles. Example, air. So uh, around us, we are surrounded of air, right? And this air is composed of different types of gases like oxygen, we have carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and so on. Okay, and then heterogeneous mixtures are large aggregations or clumps of the substances which are mixed together. Example, emulsions like oil in water. So uh, when you mix oil in water, you can identify the oil and you can identify the water. So they are in clumps so that it can be easily identified. So like this one, this is a heterogeneous mixture and this is a homogeneous mixture. Just remove the O. I think this one is a typographical error. Okay, and let's dig more into mixture when it comes to particle size. Mixtures have different properties depending on the size of their particles. Three types of mixtures based on particle size. We have solutions, suspensions, and colloids. Again, solutions, suspensions, and colloids. All of which are described in the text slide. Later on, I will show it to you. But we have your an example of those particle sizes, we have lemonade, rock, which is also a mixture of different elements, and then salad dressing, and then this one is a package of wildflower seeds. We are going to uh, chop it down. Let's start with solutions. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures with tiny particles. The particles are too small to see and also too small to settle or be filtered out of the mixture. So, ito na yung sobrang liliit, as in nanometer size. When the salt is thoroughly mixed into the water, in this glass, it will form a solution, specifically salt solution. 
the salt will no longer be visible in the water and it won't settle to the bottom of the glass. So meaning to say, the salt is purely dissolved in the water. That is why you will not identify the salt anymore. Okay, and that is what we call solution. Example, you have alcohol and water. That is also a rubbing alcohol solution. Uh, if you have like to mix, when you're going to uh, make your coffee in the morning, you're going to put some coffee powder, milk powder or creamer, and then uh, sugar, and then you put hot water, and then when you mix it, and that is a coffee solution. Okay, you will see only one face. And you will not be uh, you will not able to identify which is the coffee powder, the creamer, and the salt anymore. And that is considered a solution because the particles are very small enough. And the next one is colloid. Colloid is a is an example again of homogeneous mixture with medium sized particles. And the particles are large enough to see but not large enough to settle or be filtered out of the mixture. It is between solution and suspension. Light can penetrate through this mixture, creating what we call a spindle effect. So the gelatin in the dish, or maybe you can say the fruit jam, if you know like uh, what we call this, guava jam, pineapple jam, mango jam, okay? Those are examples also of colloid. It looks red because you can see the red gelatin particles in the mixture however the particles are too small to settle to the bottom of the dish so that is a colloid usually they are slimy and they are very thick okay so if you see a condensed milk that is an example of colloid fog tung hamog is an example of colloid and then the last is suspension a suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in this part with large particles the particles are large enough to see and also to settle or be filtered out of the mixture. The salad dressing in this bottle is a suspension. It contains oil, vinegar, herbs, and spices. And if the bottle sits undisturbed, meaning to say hindi mo siya nagagalaw, or it's stuck for a very long time, okay, the mixture will separate into its component parts. That's why you should shake it before you use it. So there's a lot of drinks that you need to shake before you drink. Okay, so meaning to say that drink is a solution. Even medicine, you can buy it in a drugstore. But you need to shake it before you intake that medicine. Okay, in this example, we have salad dressing. So if you're going to use it for a very long time, and if you set it aside in your kitchen, you will see all those particles will be suspended at the bottom. That's why it is called suspension. And it is a heterogeneous mixture, unlike colloids and uh, solutions. They are both homogeneous, but sometimes colloids can be heterogeneous mixtures. Okay. For our lesson number three, we are going to apply mixtures in our daily lives. It is very exciting to apply because when you like to cook, when you like to mix things okay in an instant or you like mixing things something like that this is a very good topic for you as well mixtures in our everyday life anytime two or more items are combined a mixture is formed sometimes the different parts of a mixture can be separated into individual entities like what we have here in our example so we have here tea leaves dry tea leaves and then water and then we have your mixed nuts. Other times, they are married for as long as they exist. An example of a mixture is adding loose leaf tea to hot water, creating a simple kind of mixture that we call tea. And we have also mixed nuts that we usually, you know, part of our snack. And common mixture in food. So basically, most of the food that we eat every day is a combination of different things. Rarely, we do eat only one ingredient. So, wala naman sigurong kumakain lang sa atin ng flour. Wala naman siguro sa atin kumakain lang ng sugar. Okay? But we drink water. So, uh, it's very rare. Okay? For example, we can eat plain chicken, but why not 
mix it with a little seasoning, right? Food mixtures are often heterogeneous mixtures. A heterogeneous mixture is such that the components can be separated from one another, like this dessert. A bowl of halo-halo, and by the way, halo-halo is a Tagalog word, and now it is considered as an English word. Okay, so when you are going to use halo-halo in an English sentence, you can use halo-halo as an English word already. For example, it is a heterogeneous because you can separate literally pull out the individual pieces of halo-halo ingredients from the milk and from the ice. So we have here banana foster, ice cream, sweet beans, coconut gel, coconut strings, plants, palm fruits, and so on. You can separate those things if you do not want. Okay? And we have here mixed berries, good for breakfast, and eat with cereals and milk. You can separate those mixed berries. You can separate cherries, raspberry, blueberries, and strawberries. Okay? And these are other common mixtures in foods that we eat. Beyond the things we eat, our environment is full of other mixtures as well. Anytime you light a scented candle, so you know a scented candle, it's very uh, good odor. It has good odor, right? It has a pleasant odor. So you are introducing aromas into the air, meaning to say it is creating a new mixture in the environment. Like the scent is combined with the air molecules. So that is considered also a mixture. And uh, like this one. Okay, I have it here. Okay, this is an air freshener. So this air freshener uh, mixed with the air. So that is why the air around you creates a uh, fragrant smell. The opposite of heterogeneous mixtures, we all know, is a homogeneous mixture. These are the mixtures that are uniform throughout their composition. Example, lemonade juice and the air that we breathe. So the lemonade juice minus the seeds and the pulp. So if you do not have the pulp and the seeds, that is a homogeneous mixture. But if you include okay, the pulp and even you know, pieces of lemon, lemon fruit, in your juice and the seeds in your juice that is considered now as a heterogeneous mixture. Again, the air that we breathe composed of different type of gases. So those are the topics that we have in heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. So these are all the things that you need to answer for our quarter one week number four. Again, this is your assignment for week number four. And the due date for this one is until next class. Okay, so you have a lot of time. You have plenty of time to do this and for you to answer this and turn it in in our Google Classroom, okay? So again, watch the video to review and rewatch. Answer all the questions in your modules. Again, answer it if you have the soft copy in your notebook. But if you have the printed module, answer it there. Take a photo and then attach it into our Google Classroom. Then turn it to me. Do not forget that so that you will have your grades in the Google Classroom and you will have your grades in our synchronous checking. So these are all the things that you need to answer. In lesson number one, since the pages are deleted, I guess, it's a typographical error. So you need to answer what I know part, assessment, and then the additional activity. In lesson number two pages, you need to answer what's more, assessment, and then the additional activity also. And for lesson number three, again, you need to, there, there and then, you need to vlog or make a video diary for performance task number four. So, um, basis in your class, the basis is the performance task number four for lesson number three. Okay, because uh, you can see in our week number four, lesson part number three, you are going to uh, make use of mixture in an application form. So meaning to say you will apply mixture in a video format. Okay, I will uh, give you the details and the instructions in our Google Classroom when we are done with this part. So all you have to do is to prepare yourself, think about how are you going to apply mixtures in your daily life. 
is either you're going to bake <laughs> or you're going to cook or you're going to make anything that you wanted to make and then you're going to video it and then again same process you need to edit and then attach it to our google classroom and then submit it to our performance task number four but i will not post it yet okay so just uh, relax and enjoy and let us all learn as time goes by so all you have to do is to rewatch and then review this video lesson and if you do not have any questions that is now for our week number four and if you have any questions or reactions regarding this topic just contact me in my youtube channel and i will uh, you know contact you also there i will chat there with you and then in my instagram and my pages like in my facebook account as well especially in our messenger group chat okay so i will update you there with attention and reminders as well so that's all for now i'm going to sign it out and i hope you will have a blessed day and always enjoy learning in science. Bye and have a nice day, friends.